In these videos, I'm going to be detailing the strip down and rebuild of a 996.2 GT3 engine. Um, I've just picked the engine up, brought it back from, uh, from my office. And as you can see at the moment, it is in the back of the car. I had it on a um, on an engine lift um, used to get the engine out of the out of the car, takes the engine and gearbox out. So I managed to put it at the back of, of the Range Rover and just slide it in. Um, to get it out, I shall be using this engine crane here. Um, the first problem is that the engine crane won't go in at the moment because there's not enough clearance from the top of the engine to the roof lining of the car. So what I'm going to have to do is to remove, my plan is to remove the plenum, remove the oil cooler, um, and then I'll be able to slide the pallet to the back of the car and hopefully there'll be enough clearance then to get the engine crane on. So I've got to move the engine from there, over this car, over the Westfield down there, towards that end of the garage, which is where I shall be finishing the dismantling work and I'll then be putting it onto an engine stand as well, um, which I'm waiting for yeah, arriving. I've also got a decent sized drip tray because I know from experience on stripping these engines down that however much you drain the fluids, they do leak out all over the place. So that's it. I'm going to start with removing this manifold, the inlet manifold, and we'll see how I get on. Okay, I've got the inlet manifold off now. I undid the screws on these and also on these top ones then I was able to lift it off I had to undo a couple of bolts for a couple of brackets on, on the other side as well but that's all now off so I've got this spreader bar for lifting up so I've got that through a lifting eye on that side um, on this side there aren't any lifting eyes so I'm gonna have to get a chain and um, wrap it around somewhere so I shall uh, find somewhere suitably strong, get the chain wrapped around it and see if we can get the crane on. I've managed to drop the engine off the pallet and I've now checked with the engine crane that there's enough clearance from the top of the engine to the top of the tailgate so we can get the engine out. So I've got the engine crane set up and ready so now I've got to do is to shift that car out of the way so that we can get it into the garage. Right, now I've got it on the engine crane, all set up, ready to go. It looks like there's just going to be enough clearance on there. So we'll just finish lifting it up and pull it out. Right, that's the first stage complete. By shuffling the cars around, I've managed to get it into the garage. I will need to get it onto an engine stand for doing the full disassembly. But there are a, a number of parts I'll be able to remove from the top of the engine. So things like the oil filter housing on here and the power steering pump on there um, the oil cooler and probably some of the um, secondary air injection parts as well so I shall remove what I can um, whilst I wait for the engine stand to arrive because it'll probably be a few days I've had a look over the engine I've decided that the, the first part I'm going to remove is the power steering pump it looks like there's basically three bolts, one there, one there, one around this side holding it on. So I'm just going to undo those and see if it will come off. I've got the reservoir off for the power steering pump, so I'll be able to clean that up. I've also ready to remove the, the pump now. So I undid these three bolts on the front to get the pulley off and then remove these three bolts here, this long bolt from here which goes all the way through um, and I also uh, that's uh, that's it really just those four and then with those four off the uh, pump itself will lift out so that's the power steering pump off I'm going to put all of the bolts back in their respective holes on here so that I've got them all together for when it when it goes back in so with that off I'm going to move on to doing the oil cooler To make it easier to get at the bolt at the back down there, I removed this bracket. This um, this pipe here is for the air feed to the secondary air injection valve, which is there. So with that removed, I was able to get the pipes out of the way. So I've now been able to undo all four bolts on the uh, heat exchanger. 
so that will now lift out of the way so there underneath there I can now see the the manifold which attaches to the oil cooler so these are the two fittings for the oil and these are the two for the the coolant so now I've got to basically try and drain the oil out of here so I'm going to get a syringe or something to suck as much oil out of there as I can so that I don't end up making a mess all over the floor okay so this is the um, this manifold here it's basically for the oil cooler it also connects to the oil filter up here so you can see the, the oil lines one of them runs up here up to the filter and then down from the filter down to here then it runs through the cooler to here and then it goes back to the engine in there and the coolant lines are these two here one of them attaches down here and there's one on the other side as well I've had to remove the the knock sensor to get at the clamp for that so I've disconnected the two coolant lines I've also disconnected the filter housing and the the bracket on the front of it there and I've undone these four bolts on here which hold this down so now I should be able to lift the manifold up out of the way oh, I also had to um, remove this end of this coolant pipe as well and uh, bracket on here so I'll try to lift the manifold off now okay I've now got the, the manifold off so I can better see what's uh, what's actually going on with the pipes so the actual routing of the oil is from here up to the filter then back down from the filter through across the cooler that way and then out through this pipe down here so on the block it's between these two I'm not quite sure which which direction it is but basically the oil's flowing in and out of those two this looks like it's for the um, crankcase ventilation so that's just an air pipe so on the manifold that just goes from there straight up through to there because remember that this block is originally a from an air cooled engine so the block design is air cooled so there are no actual coolant passages in the block hence the coolant passages for the oil cooler all have to go through this manifold so I've now moved on to removing this bracket here which holds the power steering pump air conditioning compressor and also the alternator over here it also has the uh, tensioner on it for the auxiliary drive this also has coolant passages in it so we've got one section here um, which goes off so there's one of the pipes there which goes off up to the radiators at the front of the car so I'll just put that out of the way um, and on here we have the two pipes which take the coolant to the heads so they've been undone they have o-rings in there for those there's one of those on each side and this main bracket is then held down by four bolts so these four here and then once they're off it should just lift off So there, that's where it uh, where it lifts off. So there, you can see the pipes. So where the coolant goes off to the the head, so it just travels straight straight through there, and then off to the head. So with that off, we can start to see the the block. This hole here is for the um, bypass pipe, which goes up to the filter housing. So I, uh, I didn't mention that earlier. Um, so that's the that bracket off. So I'm now going to move on to looking at the water pump. So we've got the water pump here with the two coolant hoses going to it there. So I shall remove that next. Right, I've now removed the water pump. There's a bunch of Torx bolts around the outside of it. Turn it over, you can see the, the impeller there. So the other parts of the, of the coolant system. So we've got the thermostat, which is down in there. So the, uh, the water pump you see where the, the water channels go through there and then there's another couple of fittings up here which go off to these pipes so I'm now going to have a look at removing this assembly from the front of the engine 
or the back of the engine, whichever way you look at it, um, which looks like it goes around here. So I'm going to try and undo these bolts and see if we can remove this. I've decided to leave this fitting on the engine for now um, because I'm using it to lift it. I've got the chain around there and I'm going to put it on an engine stand soon. So I'm moving on to removing the inlet section. So this section here, which holds the injectors and um, also this valve here, which I think is for the secondary air injection. So I've um, undone the electrical connectors from the injectors. So there's three of those on there. There's also two bolts which hold the fuel rail down on there. And then around each cylinder, there are four bolts, as you can see there, which hold the, the manifold on. So with those removed, I should be able to lift it off. It's attached, I've undone this clip as well for the wiring loom, so the wiring loom will move out of the way. Um, as you can see the fuel line does run across to the other side over there, to the manifold, so I'll probably have to take those off together unless I uh, just undo it at this fitting here, so I might uh, do that. So I'll get that removed and um, get the inlet lifted off. So this section of the fuel rail and the inlet manifolds there have now been removed. I also had to remove this bracket which goes across to the to the other head as well. So with that now removed we can see in the ports so you can see the, the nice machining on the ports. You can um, see the cutout here this is for the injector. So you can see through to the valves. So that's that removed on that side so I'm going to now repeat that on the other side. With the second uh, bank's injectors and inlet removed, we're now pretty much down to the to the bare long block. So at this stage, it's easy to see the individual parts of the engine. So this section here, so this is the the main crankcase. So we have the see the crankshaft in there. Then on top of that sits the water jacket. So this holds the actual cylinders piston goes up and down in. So on the earlier cars, obviously the air cooled, so this is where you would see the fins. But on this, obviously being water cooled, we've got the, the water jacket in there. Then on top of that sits the cylinder head with the, the valves. Then on top of the cylinder head is the cam carrier. And then obviously in there we have the, the camshafts. So we have the, this is the actuator for the Vario cam, the song was rather for the Vario cam. Um, and then you can see we've got the obviously the inlet camshaft here, the exhaust camshaft here. Um, what else can we see on here? <clears throat> Move around to this side. I'll show you some sections on the oiling system. So this, so on this engine, it uses a twin scavenge pump which sits on the end of each bank which goes on there. Now this scavenge pump picks up from this here which goes directly onto the scavenge pump and an oil pipe which runs from the other end of the gallery here. And if you can see inside there, you can't really see but there's a hole there and there, there and there, there and there. So the oil drains from the cam carrier into basically like a, a sump that runs underneath there and then the this the scavenge pump sucks the oil from there and from there and then it returns it back to the oil tank and then there's also another scavenge pump in the bottom of the crankcase which um, sends the oil from the crankcase back to the oil tank so I'm going to leave this at this point for now so now down to the long block and um, in the next section I'm going to be starting to remove the, the camshafts and then look at getting on to removing the heads.